Welcome to the ArtsBridge second annual winter solstice celebration, Art After Dark. We're delighted to be together as creatively as we can on this longest night of a very long year. 2020 has had some dark times. COVID, the election, the death of George Floyd, education on hold, lost jobs, businesses shutting down. It's dark at four o'clock and we're stressed without the normal support of family and friends. All through history, people have done the best they could. Art has been a way to express, share, cope, and overcome hardships. Tonight, almost 20 artists, poets, and musicians have shared the ways they feel about dark nights and watching for the dawn. My name is Wendy Tuck, and together with Amanda Stevens and Diane McDonald, we'll be showing you virtually around our gallery of exhibits. There are always stories and tales to explain how things came to be. While you listen to the Inuit story, How the Raven Stole the Sun, marvel at the full moon and blue moon captured by Sherry Morris and the half moons photographed by Pete Myers. Once upon a time, there was an evil wizard. He cut a hole in the sky and he and his wife moved in. She was miserable. It was cold and dark. So the wizard bundled up the sun and moon and threw them into the hole. But down below, people got hungry and cold and started to die. The raven decided to trick the wizard. He found the hole in the sky and turned himself into an adorable baby. The wizard and his wife let him do anything he wanted. One day, while the wizard and his wife slept, the raven rolled the sun and moon out the hole and put them back where they belonged. So there was winter when the wizard stole the sun and spring when the tricky raven got it back. We're here with Sherry Morris from Parkersburg, and Sherry is going to share her Art After Dark story with us. Hi, my, uh, my Art After Dark story started with a fascination with the moon when my parents live 1,100 miles away, and my mom and I text every night, I love you to infinity and beyond, and we start going outside, sending pictures to each other of the moon and realizing that even though we're that far apart, that was a connection for us to be able to be looking at the exact same thing at the same time, no matter where we're at. So, and you say that you um, have been taking photos of the moon, and so some of the photos in the uh, video presentation are yours? Yes, I have, think I brought three. I got um, the moon and then the blue moon, was able to take the light out of it and get the blue moon just with my little Sony camera in my backyard. Oh, that's awesome. So is there anything, any words of wisdom you want to give everyone who suffers from the really long nights? There's always a light outside. And when the clouds pass, there's always the stars and the moon to look to. Thank you, Sherry. The Inca in Peru have waited to greet the return of the sun in this ceremony since the 1400s. Here's a short clip of how they celebrate the winter solstice. These two watercolors, by yours truly, Wendy Tuck, were made during the pandemic and election, a very grim time. These painted poems helped me see what I was feeling and move out of this stuck place. The words read, We cannot lose, but oh, we will. It's too complicated. I feel angry, frustrated, and stupid. I am angry at myself. 
No, 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 do not offer hope to the starving, for if it fails, it is crueler than death. The second one says, A battleship. The sea is vast. Bombers will find it eventually as they traverse the grid, sweeping, sweeping, sweeping. I feel rage, resentment, helpless, frantically looking for an escape. There isn't one. These next two photographs are by Stephanie Straub. To quote her, the beauty of art is that it's not any one thing. It's sight, it's sound, it's a feeling, it's a memory, or maybe it's just a thought for right now. It can be planned out, or maybe it catches your eye. It can be freeing, or it can bring you home. It's perspective, and it's never the same. In the Fog by Dave Hess. There is something mysterious about fog. It hovers over the landscape, shrouding the details. The mind is curious to know what lies behind the cloudy drape, yet apprehension heightens because you can't see all the things hidden from view. Curiosity and fear are always at play in the fog. Visit Kansas by Shelley Hess. On a road trip through the state of Kansas, I was struck by its vastness. The striking pastoral scene was endless. It was both beautiful and lonely. Still suffering through the restrictions implemented by the pandemic, this scene heightened the isolation that I was feeling. Artist, Melissa Green, Rearview Mirror. Instead of always racing ahead, maybe it's time to look in the rearview mirror and see what we've been missing. This next photo is called Reflection by Andy Straub. A reflection is an interesting phenomenon. Reality in all of its beauty is presented upside down, a new perspective. When I have a problem or need to make a decision, I like to think like a reflection by seeing the same issue in a new way. My name is Chris Hoke and about last November, I started painting again after about a 40 year absence. Uh, looking back, uh, with the times being really crazy as they are, I was very stressed, very frustrated, overwhelmed. Uh, there were nights that I would just lay in, lie in bed and um, the mind was so active. It was all that constant chatter. What I did, what I should have done, uh, the future, the fears and so forth. Uh, it was like that uh, mind was just racing. And the Buddhists call it a monkey mind, and it's just not healthy. So uh, looking back, and now with the pandemic, it added more to my stress. So looking back, I think, boy, last November, that had to be good timing or synchronicity that I got back into the painting. And these are the pieces that I did since last year. Now for me, my painting is my meditation, it's self uh, therapy, it's my escape. Because when I'm painting, I'm in the flow. I'm fully focused on the piece that I'm working on. So my mind is still. And oftentimes when I'm working, uh, I just feel really good. The time goes by an hour, three hours, it doesn't matter. And usually when I'm finished with the session, that overflow that has uplifted me and made me happy carries on the rest of the day. And I also found out that in this past year, walking my property, that all of a sudden I'm seeing, and this is part of uh, our property, I'm looking at it through the eyes of an artist and I'm seeing the beauty in nature. Uh, I'm seeing the shadows, the light, the texture, the details of things. These were taken from photographs, so obviously in the summertime. Um, it gives me great joy and happiness to be back into my painting. Um, and for me, at this point in my life, I'm doing the artwork for me. My goal is not to get in a show, get a blue ribbon, not to be a national known artist. 
it's important for me just to do the work because it gives me happiness. Um, I call my artwork my addiction and it's a healthy addiction at that. So if anybody too viewing the artworks can see the beauty in nature um, and is uplifted and happy, then that's the bonus. I really believe that um, everyone is creative in their own way. Uh, it could be painting, music, dance, uh, even cooking and working in a garden is creative. I recommend you do it. Find your passion, what you love to do, and get in and do it. Find the time to do your artwork because in this time of, like I said, a lot of hate, hate and anger, we need something to uplift our spirit. And as artists, if we lift up our spirit, it goes out there into the world and it makes other people happy and certainly viewing our artwork. Uh, so I'm so pleased that I got back into my artwork. It has uh, helped me so much during this time. And I just hope other people get into your work whatever is your passion and just do it because art today matters in this world and you matter do the work just do it judy schleyer's cross stitch the dragon julie started this 30 years ago but got busy with her new business during the pandemic she decided to finish it but couldn't find the pattern doug kronick told her it was called the castle by dreamscape and Julie even found someone on eBay who had the pattern. There's a tiny rest spot, she said, because when she put it down 30 years ago, she'd left the needle stuck in the fabric. Anxiety by Heather Fairchild. There's a vibration pulsing within, demanding to be acknowledged, begins at the tips of the toes, up to the shins, knees, thighs, hips. It begins to roar in the lower back, meeting the stomach and up to the organs. Everything is listening, sitting like a tiger watching its prey, calculating the perfect moment, patiently, attentively, idling like a group of soldiers standing at attention, waiting for their command. In one swift motion, it's already taken over and swallowed us whole. This oil painting by Lauren Conley was commissioned by a good friend of hers, signifying interactions between special relationships. Sometimes we get so tied up in life, we need a visual to see the way. Lauren also takes commissions for stained glass artwork. Here we see the lily in a cherry box frame with colored LED lights behind it so that it changes tone and mood. And sometimes when things are rough, you just have to shake your head and laugh Here's Jack, a neighbor's donkey, doing his thing by Lauren Conley. Other people turn to the familiar. Here's a piece by Joe Bello, Food, Friends, and Family. Joe cuts his pieces out of cereal, cracker, or pizza boxes, soup labels, and whatever looks good. In Brighton, England, there's a solstice celebration called the burning of the clocks. Take a look at this short video clip. <laughs> Portugal has combined Christmas and solstice in an unusual way. Single village boys create pure chaos with pagan mass, screaming, teasing, and going from house to house eating the food. The idea is that they're chasing away the cold so they can have fun again. Here we have a painting by Rebecca Hemsworth. She tells us, this is called escape a self-portrait of me in a different time escaping to the new world. Sometimes you just want to run away, but you don't. You stand up and then walk. Hot air ballooning at dawn in Turkey, photo by Dan Hess. He says, we all have fears. Some fears can keep us from enjoying life. My son is teaching me that living life is more important than giving in to our fears. 
He talks about risk assessment and thinking for yourself. Facing fears and enjoying life happens with education and truth. Chuck Connors' art shows what came from the dissolving of a relationship and the internal questioning that comes with that. His collage, Just Who in the Hell Do I Think I Am?, is composed of business and ID cards from 1970 to 2018, along with photos of himself from an early age to current. God rest ye merry gentlemen Tonight we're celebrating the winter solstice, and solstice comes from a word meaning standing still. Tonight, the sun reaches the farthest point south, and for a second it seems to stand still, right before it begins the journey upward, bringing us longer days, warmer weather, and stronger faith. In our community, Christmas is usually more celebrated than solstice. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will to all people. And from the Art After Dark community, a winter solstice blessing. May you find peace in the promise of the solstice night, that each day forward is blessed with more light, that the cycle of nature, unbroken and true, brings faith to your soul and well-being to you. Rejoice in the darkness, in the silence find rest, and may the days that follow be abundantly blessed.